Neil, to talk about the, the down championship this weekend, with the final coming up between Kilku, who are probably you know, almost sick of looking at the county title at this stage, they're winning it so often, and Carrie Duff, who are in, in like they're very much a novel team at this stage, haven't won it before. Does it have yeah. that feeling of you know, men against boys, David against Goliath, that there's only one team going to win this? It's very hard to tell. Um, I mean, it definitely does. Like, I mean, if, if you were looking at it completely, you know, black and white, I suppose, like, it's very hard to make a case for a team in their first in their first senior county final against a team as seasoned as, as Kilku reigning Ulster champions. And, like, the, the, the definition of the term seasoned is Kilku because the way that they... And I know, I know they were convincing winners against Warren Point um, last night, but... They just tend to uh, just have this unbelievable ability to, to grind games out, which we saw all through last year. Um, so it's, it's it's hard to make a case for Carried Off. That said, it, it does have a there's a, a few different factors at play. A lot of people would have seen the Warren Point game last night as being the de facto final in down. You know, the, 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 and you wonder how much that might get into the if at all, the, the psyche of Kilku, you know, the fact that like so much emphasis was placed on that because Warren Point had beaten Kilku earlier in the championship and um, to send Kilku into the back door. So there was a, you know, there was an underlying, a bit of, not a needle necessarily, but there was just a bit of a, a story going on there as well, a story within, within that, that semi-final. Whereas Carried Off come into this, I don't think they've, they've, they've certainly never played Kilku in senior championship um, that I that I can recall. Um, so, and I, like I saw it carried off about a month ago against Clonduff, it would have been, you know, one of would see be seen as one of the top three or four clubs in the county. Certainly would have been expected to be in the final ahead of carried off, and, and they they were far too good for carried off that night. And it did feel like men against boys, but at the same time, carried off are like the, the, I think they've won the last two under twenty one championships and down. They have a lot of emerging talent. I'm not sure any other club in the county at the minute has more players on the on the, the down panel. Uh, certainly, the two you know the the, the two Guinness brothers, um, Owen McCabe, um, are all starters. Um, you know, they're, like they're they're a young side that has like a lot of promise. And when I was talking to one of the uh, uh, one of the guys who's been involved with Carried Off for a long time this morning, and, and he was saying that the hike in tuition fees in England and you know things like that have really played a big part in that because carried off like, like a lot of city stroke town sides you know they, they would lose guys to to work or to university overseas or wherever like and that just hasn't happened I suppose because of factors like that so what you're seeing is the, is the nucleus of a really good um, strong young team just whether physically they're ready for uh, a team like Kilku, I, I would have my doubts. Yeah, and just just to run through the results from the semi finals at the weekend: carried off two thirteen, Bally Holland one fifteen, Kilku one eighteen, Moran Point two six. Just from from what you've seen this year, and referring back to the All Ireland final where Kilku pushed Carf into extra time, and obviously Carf took over at that point, but still a great performance from Kilku. Are Kilku the same team that they kicked on? Because you know, the way some people would say they won their Ulster title finally, maybe they're kind of happy enough with that. No, I would say I would say they're better, um, and I would say the fact that they got over the line in Ulster now. I would say that, you know it's unfortunate for them that there's no Ulster championship to play for this year as it stands because, um, you could have seen the beginning of a, a bit of a period of dominance there too because, when they won that, Ulster last year it had been coming for a while but they did it without like, a guy like Daryl Hanlon. Daryl Hanlon had, was. Kilku captain three years ago, uh, and and you know back to back injuries, you know very serious injuries, a uh, bad back injury, and then a cruciate. And he's come back into the fold this year, albeit he didn't play. He didn't play against one point last night. Keelan Doherty didn't play last year, and he's been part of the down set up the last couple of years. Very good, quick, intelligent player, just cl- classic Kilku kind of player. And then you know you've guys like uh, Ryan McAvoy. Um, who was only 18 during Kilku's run there last year um, and he he is a guy who you could play anywhere um, like li- literally anywhere on the field he's just a superb athlete, big strong guy he's somebody that I know a lot of down 
followers will be hoping to see you know with the county soon like in a, and he's only 19 um and then like even the goalkeeper like i mean martin mccord was the goalkeeper last year uh and had a class run the whole way through but now niall kane has come back and like they, they've, they've arguably three of the best goalkeepers in the county on their on their one panel you know um so it's very i think like who are only going one way um, mm. and that's ominous for everybody else and connor laverty presumably playing as well as ever yeah i'm um, still picking pockets everywhere and and uh, i didn't i didn't see much of the game last night but you know he's still he, he again he's just a guy who knows what to do and when and when to do it on the football field there's nothing Connor Laverty needs to learn and it's no surprise at all why he's such a highly regarded coach um, he's obviously involved with, with Monaghan at the minute but he's involved with, with different teams in Cuckoo also and, and has been with I think it's Trinity in, in Dublin um, he's just a guy I, like I actually thought he was Definitely Cuckoo's best player in the All Ireland final last year. You know, he, he just Carfin. He, he, he was one player that Carfin threw out, just probably couldn't quite get the grips with, and he just has that bit of cuteness and, and knows how to use his size or, or lack thereof. You know, uh, to his advantage completely. Um, so you know, like he, he's he's shown no signs of of going anywhere. Yeah, and just when I think of it, as I like carried off coming in for their first county final senior. And I refer back to my own experience of that with Kula in 2012 against Kilmacud. Now, both teams hadn't been in the final. But I remember making these sort of mistakes in terms of like hyping yourself up too much before a final, being out on the street, pucking, pucking a ball against the wall until 9 o'clock at night, you know, when it's yeah. getting dark in October. Just making all these sort of mistakes of getting yourself too wound up and the game is nearly played before you, you ever go out there. Whereas Kilku, they've been down the road before, nothing will fluster them. And it it's almost no. feels like this game could be won before it even starts. Like, can you make a case for Carrie Duff? I would struggle. Yeah. Um, I would struggle. And again, as I say, it's not um, nothing to do with the, the personnel that they have. And I think Carrie Duff will be a major player in down football in years to come. But as you said, it's just what you're looking at here is just two teams at, at opposite ends of the same scale. And Kilku are are as close to the finished article as there is in down at the minute um, and, and in Ulster. <laughs> their mentality, their ability to, to win games um, and to, you know, they, they, Kuku, Kuku are not a team that, that blows teams away, <laughs> apart from last night to an extent. Generally, they, you know, they just do enough to win, but they just have that knack um, and carried off our, our common force. Um, but. As we've seen through this championship, where you know we've seen kind of Jekyll and Hyde, I suppose you know they were poor against Clondoff, poor in the first half against Longstone, very good in the second half against Longstone, brilliant in the first half against Ballyholland yesterday. You know, again with a, with a big wind at their back, and then with the, with the wind against them, struggled and it went the extra time. You know, so this is very much uncharted territory for the players and the club and how they handle it. Um, will be interesting, I suppose. In some ways, you might just see it as a free hit. You know. Very few would have anticipated that they would be here. The draw worked in their favour because Warren Point, Burn, and Kilku were all kept on the one side of it. Um, so, you know, they, they go into it with no no pressure and no expectation. So, w w which will make them dangerous. They're very very quick, and um, very pacey, and as I say, a young fit team. Like so, that, you know, the if they got a good start, who knows? Mm, and Mickey Moore, of course, <laughs> looks like he's heading for more uh, more glory here. I thought it was very interesting to see both Mickey against Pete McGrath in the Ross Trevor game a few a couple of weeks ago. Two men over seventy on the sideline, and you're thinking, you know, in the COVID era when people over a certain age are supposed to be more at risk. Two two old men fighting and di raging against the dying light it was great to see. I thought. Yeah, I, I was actually talking to um, Pete a couple of weeks before that, like, and he was he was you could tell talking to him that like he, you know he was kind. Of, cautious about where this season was going or you know what you know what maybe lay in store down the line i don't think he was completely convinced obviously that we're we're out of the woods just yet i don't think anybody's necessarily convinced that that's the case but he's just a man who um, absolutely lives and breathes football and that's it and i just can never ever see a day when pete mcgrath isn't involved um to some degree with somebody and even when you speak to him like just the enthusiasm 
um, that, that he that he has, and I know Mickey, Mickey Moore doesn't do he doesn't do media and he doesn't do press, so you maybe you know you, he probably doesn't get the, the same coverage in that way. But I know that he's exactly the same when you talk to talk to Kalku players who you know to him to them he would have slightly been Kalku's bet noir whenever he was he was slot meal manager. You know they they beat Kalku a couple of times, so but he's come in there and they they're just he has a meeting in the palm of his hand completely um, and. It is great to see. It's great to see men like that still having such a passion and a, a great influence on the game. Mm. And hopefully, Carrie Duff can give him a good game anyway. Neil Lockhart yeah. of the Irish sure. News. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Shane.